This is Bob. Bob thinks he's got it all figured out, but let's be real. Bob doesn't know how to design. Don't worry, Bob. We're here to help you. Together, we're going to transform that disaster into something not so disastrous. So get that crap out of here! Do you want a jaw-dropping new banner and logo to skyrocket your views? Then watch until the end because I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. I'm going to turn you from a Bob to a Canva Creates. And stick around until the end of the video because I'll be hiding a secret throughout the video so only the real ones will see it. Today we're diving into Photopea, the ultimate free design tool to create a banner and logo that'll make Bob's channel and yours look like it was designed by a pro. So we're going to start out with the banner. So go to new project right here. And for the dimensions, you can go with either this one or what I like to do is change the height to 423. And later on in the video, I'll change it back to 1440 because that's the correct YouTube banner size. It just makes it a lot easier to work with when the banner looks like this versus a giant wallpaper. Now, everything I use in this video will be down in the description so you guys can download it, the backgrounds, the light leaks, whatever I use, and use it in your own banner. So the folder should contain two things, but I recommend you guys using your own. But if you want to follow along step by step, then go ahead and use what I provided. We're going to start with the background and drag it and drop it onto our project. Then we're going to grab these boxes and make it huge until it fits the entirety of the banner and make sure it's center as well then blast that now we're ready to add some text this is going to be the best part of the tutorial because i'm going to show you guys how to make some awesome 3d text super quick and easy so go ahead and grab your text tool and click anywhere on your canvas and type out each letter of your name individually and hit that check mark once you're done so i'm going to go ahead and type in a c and hit Control a to select it and i'm going to make the size a little bit bigger I'm going to change the color of it to white for now. And for the font, I'm going to be using lemon milk, which you guys can also find in the folder in the description as well. Now I'm going to hit control C and control V to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to type in my next letter. So we got A, we got M, we got B, we got I, and we got T. Hit that check mark. And now we are done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to make these 3D. So go ahead and Double click on one of your letters and we're going to go ahead and create the 3D look right now. So check this 3D box right here. Make the angle negative 90 so that the 3D is below it, whatever that means. And then uh, change the color to a darker gray. That's if you're going with white text. If you go with red text, do a dark red. If you go for blue text, do a dark blue. And we're going to leave everything else the same. Now we're going to add a gradient overlay to it and change this black to a gray a pretty dark gray i'd say about halfway and hit okay and hit okay again and now we're going to go to inner glow change the color to white change the blend mode to uh let me figure this out real quick color dodge and then increase the spread and size until it looks like this and you can adjust the opacity if you want i'm gonna go with uh about 50. This will give it a nice face when you finish the 3D look. I hit OK. Now to make this way easier for you guys, go ahead and click Define New right here. And you'll see here it saved the style. So when you go to your other text, you can just click it and enable it on every single one of them. So you don't have to do that for all of them. It's super handy and I'd highly recommend you guys do it as well. OK, now this is the fun part. So we're going to arrange all these letters. So click on your first letter and hit Control, Alt and T to free transform it. Now, I like to rotate it a little bit. So we'll rotate the first one a little bit. Then we'll grab the A, rotate it as well, whatever direction you want. I'll go with the opposite. And what you can do is you can actually like put the A over the C, or you could put the A behind the C like that, right? It's completely up to you. So I'll put the A behind the C. And then I'll put the B in front of the M like this. I'll leave the I the same and then the T I'll rotate to the right. Okay, so now we're gonna click on your top text and your bottom text while holding shift, right click on one of them and click convert to a smart object. So now it is all one piece, but you'll not be able to edit the text anymore. So make sure you finalize that before you do this. Now double click on that and go to inner glow and it should automatically make it exactly how you want it because it uses the same settings from last time you used the inner glow. So then you can either adjust some of these things or just leave it the same and hit okay. 
So now our text is completely done. Super easy and it looks amazing. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the background stand out a little bit more. So go ahead and click on your background layer right here. I'd also recommend naming these because I haven't been doing that and it's been super freaking confusing and I don't know what's going on. Go ahead and grab your blur tool over here on the left and change the strength of it to 100. Now hold alt and right click and adjust the brush size to about like right here. And it'll say it needs to be rasterized. Yeah, whatever. Do that and just start drawing on the outside of your uh, background, but leave the inside unblurred. I'm going to try to get around these circles as well. So it gives it a 3D look. Okay, so now we're going to make the background stand out even more. So go to new layer right here. Go to your brush tool. Make sure the color's black and the brush is like decently big and brush on the black around the center of focus. And then go to opacity and turn it down a little bit so that the middle is bright and colorful. If you made it this far, thank you so much. And leave down in the comments, where's Cambit? It's gonna be a new thing I'm gonna be doing. I'll be throwing around a Cambit randomly in the video. And if you see it, type where's Cambit in the comments and I'll know exactly what you guys mean. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to new layer again, but drag it to the very top. So it's on top of every layer you have. I'm gonna name it light. Make sure the top box is white and make your brush about this big. Now go ahead and drop that bad boy right here. Well, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Drop that bad boy right there. And now it looks freaking awesome, but we're not even done. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some light spots on the text itself to make it stand out a little bit more. So click new layer once again. Keep the color white, but make the brush a little bit smaller this time. Change the blend mode to overlay and click just randomly on the text and it'll make it look amazing now believe it or not we only have one to two more things left to do and then we are completely done next thing you want to do is go down here to this half circle right here click it new adjustment layer and go to i don't even know i don't remember no i'm just kidding it's actually color balance that you want to go to so click on color balance adjust all of these to your liking but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go negative 100 on the red negative 69 on the green and then negative 25 on blue this gives it a nice little blue tint to it and you can also uncheck this box if you want a different look but i like this look it looks pretty awesome and now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add curves so go down here to the adjustment layer go to curves go up on this line just a little bit and down on this line a little bit as well and it'll make it look a little bit better. So now we're gonna make this the original size that it was before. So go to image, canvas size, and change the height to 1440. Now it's gonna look kind of weird, but it's completely fine. You guys can make it look prettier if you want. Go up to file, export as, and JPEG. If it's too big of a file, then go down to 99% and that should make it perfect. Click save. Upload it to YouTube and you're good to go. Next thing we're gonna do is the logo. So this is gonna be super easy. Go to image, canvas size, and change it to 800 by 800. We're gonna use pretty much all of the same elements from the banner, but you might have to tweak some things. Now, first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to either hide this light spot right here or move it to the top like that. And boom, you could use this as your logo or what I like to do is I like to just have a singular letter. So like C, for example. Make it big, control alt T, move it to the center like this. And you know, my logo is pretty simple. I'm going to go make a circle and put it right here. Make it white. You guys can just put the first letter of your name or whatever, and use that as your logo. Boom, put it there. Now what I recommend doing is clicking your background layer, go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And this will make your logo stand out a little bit more. Also go up to image adjustments and brightness and contrast and turn the brightness down a bit and the contrast up. So boom, your logo is completely done. Super easy. Export that the same way as the banner. And you guys have a full new package. I hope this helped you guys. If it did, you know what to do. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.